And we back like bra straps is Vach Lombardi with another film session. Dallas Cowboys preseason game three. It was an ugly one. Who cares? It's preseason. Whatever. I want to talk y'all off a ledge about Joe Looney. Just to kind of talk about how he did and, um, you know, what can we expect moving forward for young Joe Looney, who's going to be our center indefinitely until Travis Frederick gets back. Let's take a look at this play here. Now, thing about Joe Looney, man, and I was saying this on another show, um, is you know when he was when he was playing guard, I didn't necessarily like his fit there because he never was a dig people out of the hole type of lineman to me. You know he was more of a hat on hat movement, get there, stand your ground type of guy, and that's perfect for center. You know we don't you know we don't normally see Travis Frederick uh, whoop the hell out of people. We see him get hats on hats. We see Zach Martin driving people into oblivion, right? So I see uh, Joe Looney fitting that mold a lot more, right? So what his job is mostly is to call out protections make sure everybody's lined up correctly identifying the mic you know things like that uh identifying the uh, formation in front so we can get blocking combos and you know things like that he always has the opportunity to check to a um to a blocking combo uh some people call them cags i don't like the term cag that's center and guard combo um but that's what some people call them. So in this particular situation, you know, uh, so Joe and Connor Williams are responsible for this uh, one take there, one take to this uh, to this backer here. Um, so we could look at this a couple ways. You know, Joe could either say, hey, Connor, get this guy and I'll climb immediately or um, I'll get him and Connor, you climb. Right. Or Joe can go, hey, fam, let's just double team him until we get to the linebacker, right? And that's up to, you know, that's up to Joe. That's at his discretion. It, you know, if he feels like he can he can take this block one-on-one easily, then it gives Connor the, the, the quicker out to get to second level. It's all about communication, right? So at this particular time, and this could happen a lot, who cares? Uh, as long as the job gets done, Joe decides, hey, Connor, let's take this dude to the linebacker, right? Boom. Um, there's a lot of things that, that, that could go wrong. I mean, it's all about timing, getting off the block. It just happened to be done really well right here, right? So uh, you see Joe and Connor on the inside. They're getting movement on 55 here. 65, whatever his number is, uh, we're going to see them get, get movement on this guy. They're going to move him. He's a one tech, gotcha. Uh, they're going to move him until we get to the linebacker that we're trying to block. Then at that point, Connor Williams will come off, engage with the linebacker. Joe Looney got the push that he needed, and the running back can just kind of, you know, take what he gets. I mean, um, the offensive line looked pretty bad last night. But if you surround Joe with Connor and Lael and Zach um, and Tyron, you know, the line will look better as a whole. You can kind of hide Joe in a lot of these situations. But um, Joe in a double team situation, we could feel pretty confident about that. Now, this is one of those outside zone situations. You know, most people think, let me run a play. Most people think that everything is just going to be this very isolated one-on-one -on -one block type of deal. No, sometimes we're going to get Joe moving in space. Sometimes we're going to, um, you know, we just need Joe to get a hat on the hat and let everybody else climb the second level and continue their blocks, right? So this is a, in an outside zone uh, situation, right? Or oh, zone read. Uh, it looks like a, it looks like outside zone, but <laughs> Rod just hit this thing right up a gap. That's okay. Um, I can really tell by what the tight end is doing. Yeah, cool. We'll just call it the inside zone situation. Whatever. Um, I'm not coaching there. So anyway, so what we got here is just like I said on the last clip, I guess there could be some type of communication here. Like I said, I don't know the the exact play call here, but I could assume that there could be a combo to front side back here. But Joe feels like, OK, cool. I can take this block myself. And Joe ain't necessarily got to whoop somebody to the 40 yard line. He just kind of got to get in the space, execute the block, get him out the way. You know what I mean? So young Connor can get upfield. Uh, the backside guard can get upfield. Leo Collins can make a move and block somebody in space. Uh, Joe Looney just, hey man, th there wasn't any movement upfield, but if you just get the guy out of the play, it opens up the hole regardless. And, you know, we run this zone look, you know, the, the running back is eventually going to pick that, you know, pick that hole anyway, or pick, uh, the hole with the most grass or the most space free run space in it anyway. So um, 
you know, yeah, Joe ain't you know whooping nobody ass here, but he's he's making a very effective block here. Joe's a veteran, man. You know, he's not a rookie or anything. He's been doing this for a while, so uh, he knows the little little nuances and things that he could do to make this thing work. I've come to the to the uh, conclusion that I'm going to call this an inside zone play simply because Connor Williams didn't try to overtake the defensive end here. He went straight to the uh, second level. So <laughs> I had this internal debate with myself. So this is inside zone blocking, y'all. Anyway, moving on. So this is an example. Uh, okay, so so Joe kind of gave up a little bit of penetration right here. Let me show y'all. Joe gave up a little bit of penetration right here. And it's cool. It, you know, it just looks bad here because it was a negative play, so to speak, right? If you kind of look at it a little bit harder, yeah, Joe kind of got pushed, pushed backwards a little bit, but the bad play resulted from the front side of the offensive line you know, or the blocking situations or whatever. So the tight end, the left tackle, and the left guard kind of sort of, well, you know, kind of was cool. He was, he was going to second level. So let's say the tight end and the left tackle. Tackle, Mr. Block, tight end. Cool. All right, so that's kind of the reason for this, right? Um, so Joe, even though Joe looked bad, if everybody else was on task, this play would have probably been okay. But we can't have Joe looking bad and everybody else looking bad. Yeah, kind of just got the second level made his block. Cool. So, yeah, we can't have everybody looking bad, which goes back to my argument on my blog video, man. Um, if you surround Joe with other talent, then we'll be fine. We'll be good to go. However, if you put him on the field with, you know, with some bad players, I mean, Joe will blend in with those guys and he'll look bad too. But whatever, just wanted to make that point. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Vach Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute. And here, the last play I wanted to show you, we ain't got to worry about Joe Looney in space. Uh, we're going to get him pulling. He's going to wrap to the front side defensive back or front side linebacker. Yeah, first threat type of deal. Um, boom, boom. And it lines up, right? Joe executed his block well. He uh, His leverage could have been a little better. You know, if he would have attacked the um, – correct shoulder this would have been a perfect little kick out and he could have got could have got nasty with it you know got his head across there he's he's kind of blocking the back half of the man here but that's okay though the db wanted to get the hell out the way so i ain't mad at that uh i was most impressed by joe actually uh pulling not looking you know not looking clumsy getting in space quickly and effectively uh swain kind of giving us a little penetration making it funky but joe was able to clear that getting in the open space making his block is that Bo Scarborough? Yeah, that's Bo Scarborough. Nah, I ain't mad at you, Bo. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Solid. You cleared that block. You get that. Okay, cool. This ain't a this ain't a Bo Scarborough film session. I just wanted to look. But uh Joe Loney, man. Yeah, uh Joe Joe did just fine last night, man. Um, we're gonna get three new offensive linemen to surround him with. We ain't, you know, we're not gonna have too much to worry about there. That's just my personal opinion. Um so let's not overreact to how bad the offensive line looked as a whole. I think Joe and Connor Williams were incredibly solid. Um, Connor Williams probably um, gave us a blunder this game. And he's he's given us one blunder. I wouldn't say blunder, but one kind of uh, negative play per game. But that's okay. That's okay. It, you know, they were all against gangsters. You know what I mean? You know, you know. so if you're a rookie and you give up one, one play a game to some gangsters, that's fine. I'll take that. Um, but as far as Joe Looney, Connor Williams, you throw in Tyron, Zach, Lael, it will be good to go week one, or at least till Travis come back, which is indefinitely, but whatever. That's the defense giving them a big play. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I drop random videos in the middle of the week just like this. Uh, go in the comment section. Tell me how you feel about Joe Looney. How did he do last night? How you feel about uh, the game as a whole if you want to be mean and emotional or whatever. Um the Vatch's Voice podcast is on all of your podcast streaming platforms. It's not a football podcast; it's more so just regular stuff. So check that out if you, uh, you know, if you if you ain't got nothing else to do. Um, follow me on Twitter too, Vach Lombardi, V O C H L O M B A R D I. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski and the Piski Weeski. All right, salute.